Hey everyone, it's Stacy of stacy-lee.com and today is mystery block of the month reveal day. We're doing block number two and it's this really super cute double pinwheel quilt block. Now it's also known as the turnstile quilt block. Let me show you how it's made. To make the double pinwheel quilt block, I've got these cutting instructions and you can get a copy over on my website. I'll put a link in the description below. I just wanted to point out that this is part of a mystery block of the month series and some of my members have labeled their fabric so they're going to get exactly the same placement as me for all 12 blocks that we'll be making over the year. This is block number two for us and that's why these letters here are a little bit out of order because we are using labeled fabric. So if you just want to make this double pinwheel block and you're not doing the mystery block of the month, just follow along with the guide and ignore that these letters are a little bit out of order here. So for our A fabric, you're going to need to cut two pieces at five and a half inches by five and a half inches. Our B fabric, one piece at seven and a half inches by seven and a half inches. Our E fabric, one piece at seven and a half inches by seven and a half inches. And for our F fabric, two pieces at five and a half inches by five and a half inches. And also we are going to be cutting all of our pieces on the diagonal, which does make them a little bit more delicate because we'll be sewing them on the bias. So just to help with that, you might like to spray them with starch, which just makes our fabric a little bit more sturdy. So for every single piece that we cut, they're all squares. And now what we're going to do is we're going to cut them on the diagonal, which means we're going to go from corner to corner. Now, if this makes you a little bit nervous, you might like to rule the line first and then cut it so you can check that you are cutting on that line. But I'm just going to go ahead and just use my ruler to find my corners and get my nice diagonal straight line and cut. So I'll just get my ruler and I'm going to place it up on this top corner and then I'm going to make sure that it's lined up at this bottom corner. But then what you always need to do is just always quickly double check that you're still at the top on the corner up the top because it does sort of shift around a little bit and you can easily have it moved over and not even notice. So before you cut, just do double check you are on the corners at the top and the bottom. And then I'm just going to cut. Okay, now if you are using directional fabric and you've got two pieces to cut, you might just like to make sure you're cutting it with the pattern facing the same direction. So now I'll just set that aside. And I'll take my next piece and cut it on the diagonal exactly the same way and I'll repeat that until I've cut all my pieces. I've got my two pieces here and I am going to cheat. I can see all my edges are lined up nicely. You can barely tell that there's two pieces. So I'm just going to cut them together at the same time. again with these two pieces. You don't have to do this, you could cut them one at a time, just whatever you're most comfortable with. Okay, let's move on to the next step. So now I've cut all my pieces in half and I've got all these triangles. We're going to sew them together to create a bigger triangle. But first to get this, make sure they're facing each other with the short sides together. And we want to have our A fabric or our darker fabric on the left hand side and our F fabric on the right hand side. And we want to sew them all together in this order because if we don't, we could accidentally sew them in the wrong order and then we won't be able to create our pinwheel effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece from each side, place them right sides together, and then I'm just going to pop a pin in roughly so I know that I'm going to sew along this edge. And as I sew them, I like to fix it up then, the pin that is, making sure all those edges are lined up nicely. So then I'll just take the next set, fold them right sides together, pop a pin in, and repeat that for all four sets. Okay, let's sew those together. So I'm using my glide thread, which I'm trying out. I normally use Aurifil, but I am enjoying trying out the glide thread. I'm gonna stitch at stitch length two, and I've got my quarter inch foot on here. Use whatever guide you need to, to make sure you are getting a quarter inch seam allowance. And I've got my first set here that we pinned together. I'm just gonna take that pin out, and I'm gonna line up all those edges. So we want that point lined up, 
the bottom here lined up and these edges here lined up and then when I'm happy I will pop a pin back in and then I'm going to sew along right at the beginning all the way to the end. Now if your sewing machine has a habit of eating your pieces you could either start on this side which is a little bit more chunky you'd have to turn over and start on the straight edge or what you could do is get a little bit of scrap fabric and start sewing on that first so it's getting a run up and then it will start sewing really beautifully on your pieces. So I'm just going to begin sewing right at that very edge. And I'm not going to cut my thread, I'm just going to take the next piece. I've come right off the edge, I'll take my next piece. Again, line up all those edges. And when I'm happy, pop a pin in. And then I'm just going to carry on sewing and I'll repeat that for all four sets. And now I'll just cut the thread between each of the pieces. Okay, now let's press. So for all four pieces, we're going to set the stitches, which as the name suggests, sets the stitches in and makes them stronger. And it also helps our block lay flatter. Then I'm going to open it up and make sure that these seams here are facing towards the dark. And I'll finger press here so we don't have any creases. We want it to be sitting really nice and flat. And when I'm happy that it is sitting flat, I'll give that a press. And we just want to be really gentle because remember these pieces are now cut on the bias, which does make them fragile. So we want to do this really gently. Once I've finished, I'll then repeat that for all four sets. So an extra step that you might just like to do is just check that this is a really nice straight line. So all you need to do is pop your ruler on top. You can find a line on your ruler and line it up with your seam and then line it up with the edge there. We do want them to be nice and straight. So that one's perfect. And then what I would do is just check all the others are. So we're going to get really nice tidy blocks. I can see that this one is off just a smidgen at the top. So I am going to trim that. So I just wanted to mention when we are checking that that's a nice straight line, only please trim off a smidgen. We do still need it to match up with our E and B pieces. If yours is way off, you might want to unpick it, press the fabric again, and then re-sew it. We don't want to be trimming off a whole heap of fabric. We're just, if it's a smidgen out, then that's fine. So now I've got my E and my B fabric here and our sets that we sewed together. All we're going to do is now sew them together, creating our squares. So I'll just pop those aside and take my first E piece and one of my sets. And what we're doing is we're sewing them together along the long edge. And you'll see the set we sewed is just slightly smaller than this one. That's okay. I'm just going to fold it right sides together. And then you can just, if you want to, like I did before, pop in a pin roughly and then we'll fix it up when we get to that point. So I'll just match up all the pieces now, right sides together, along this long edge. I'm going to turn it over and put the pins in on this side because I want to, when I'm sewing, I want to make sure these seams are sitting nicely when I get to them. Okay, now let's sew them together. So I've got my first set here, I just will remove the pin and what I'm going to do is make sure this long edge is lined up really nicely but I'm also going to make sure that it's sitting in the middle of the piece underneath and what I mean by that is if I come up to the top I can see it's overlapping a little bit at the top here but if I go down to the bottom it's overlapping more. So that just means I need to move this top, top piece down a bit so it's sitting in the middle and then once I'm happy that it is I'll pop some pins in just making sure again these edges are lined up nicely. Okay. 
Okay, and making sure that you're happy that it is sitting in the middle of the block. Now don't worry too much because we are going to square these up. Just do the best you can. Now all I'm going to do is sew along that edge just like we did before. I'm not going to worry about a back stitch. I'm just going to start at the very edge using a quarter inch seam allowance. Now when I get to this seam here, I am going to make sure that it is going to be sewn down in the direction that I've pressed it. Okay, and then I'm going to sew right past the edge and then I'm going to take my next piece and do exactly the same. So now I'll just cut my thread again and press. So for each piece I'm going to set the stitches again and then I'm going to open it up so that the seams are getting pressed towards the larger piece and I'm going to finger press. We don't want any creases in here and once I'm happy I'll press. I will give the whole piece a once over so it's laying really nice and flat and I'll repeat that for all four pieces. So now we need to cut all four blocks into six and a half inch squares, but the key is, is we need to keep this diagonal in the center. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to take that seam and I'm going to line it up with the diagonal line on my ruler. Now all rulers have that. This ruler just happens to be six and a half inches wide. So I have a little bullseye there. So what I'll do is I'll lift it up so the bullseye is right in the center where I have the cross meeting. So the center right here, and that's exactly where I want the bullseye on my ruler. Now, if you don't have a bullseye on your ruler, perhaps your ruler is only four and a half inches wide. Well, all that would mean that you would do is you would have that centerpiece there on three and a quarter inches. So my bullseye is right on three and a quarter inches because my ruler is six and a half inches wide. Now I hope that's clear. So make sure the diagonal line is on your seam. Make sure the center of your block where it joins the two seams is right on three and a quarter inches. And then what we're gonna do is cut down both sides. And I'm just going to spin that around because it is a perfect six and a half. I will double check it and lucky I did because it's just moved a little bit up the top there. Making sure everything's still lined up and cutting. Okay, and then now I need to do it on the other two sides as well. So again, taking that diagonal line, and this time I'm just lining it up with this half seam here, and then I'm matching up my bullseye right on the center there. And remember, if your ruler isn't six and a half inches, then just measure three and a half, sorry, three and a quarter inches in. And then when you're happy, cutting. I'll spin that around. Right, and that's our first block done. So you can actually get a six and a half inch block that, uh, sorry, a six and a half inch ruler that you just plonk on top, find the center and cut all around it, which is much easier. But if you don't have that, you can use any ruler as long as it is bigger than three and a quarter inches. So just remember to make sure the center piece is at three and a quarter inches before you cut. So then please cut them all at six and a half inches squared and repeat that for all four pieces. So I've finished squaring up all four blocks at six and a half inches by six and a half inches. It is a little bit fiddly, but do take your time with it because that is really how we get really nice, perfect blocks. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these four blocks and place them so we're creating our image here, our double pinwheel. So for example, I'll take this one, which has my e-fabric at the top, and it will go on the far left corner, like in the image. And then I'm just going to go around and copy the image. Okay, 
So once they're placed in the correct position, do just double check that they are in the correct position because it's really easy to accidentally place them the wrong way around or in the incorrect order. It's much easier to double check it now than realize you've made a mistake once we've sewn them together. But once you are happy that how they're placed here matches the image here, then let's sew them together. All I'm going to do is place this top row right sides together and then place a pin in roughly, knowing that I'll sew along this edge and again here. And I'll fix that up when I get to it. I mean, I'll, I'll line them up properly when I get to it. So just like before, removing that pin, lining up the edges, this time along the sides and along the top here. Now, in this corner, we can actually nest those seams just ever so slightly, just to make sure they're sitting really nicely when we sew it together. So I'm just gonna open it up and push those seams together, nesting them. Because I'd rather them nested than overlapping in our block. So just I'm just gonna pop a pin in right there. So I know that it's positioned correctly when I start sewing. And then coming along and popping a pin in down here too. And then I'll just sew along that edge just like we did before. I can see the, well I could feel that there was a seam here. So when I get to the bottom, I will just check that that's sitting in the position that it was pressed. Okay, we could sew the next one, but I just want to open that up and check it. And that looks really nice there where the join is. If you weren't happy with how you've sewn these two pieces together, you could always unpick it, press the fabric, and then try again. So I'll set that aside and I'll do exactly the same with this piece. And down at the bottom here, I can't nest the seams because both the seams are being pressed in the same direction, but I am going to open it up and make sure that they're lining up really nicely. If I open that up, you can see it's creating a nice straight line. And then I'll just pin that so that when I get to it, it will be sitting in the correct position. Okay. Trimming my thread and now let's press. So setting our stitches and then opening it up and pressing it towards this larger piece here and finger pressing and pressing. Now I just actually unpicked my other piece and sewed it together because I wasn't happy with how this join was sewn together. And, and do just do that. Do just take a little bit of extra time to repeat something if it's not to your liking. Um, and what I found was it is better to start on the edge where you do have the two joins meeting. So I started on this end instead of this end and it turned out much more accurate. So that was just something I found. So once you've pressed that piece, then press the second piece. And now let's sew them together, finishing our block. So now we're just going to sew our two pieces together, but just pop them down and double check they are in the correct order, recreating our design over here. So then I'll just place them right sides together and then I'll bring it over and pin it. So I'm going to start in the middle this time and I'm going to nest those seams and they will nest this time. So just finding the main seam where it folds over and goes this way and on this side where it folds over and goes this way and then butting them up together until they can't go any further also lining up these edges at the top and once I'm happy I will pop a pin in it's quite bulky you might like to pop a pin in on either side or just one on one side and then on an angle so it comes over to the other then what I'll do is I'll come to the very top here and line up those corners or edges on this side and on this side popping in another pin and I will put one in the middle, the more the merrier, coming down to the bottom, putting a pin in the bottom here, 
and then again one in the middle and just sewing those two pieces together just like we have all the other pieces. So now setting the stitches and then what we are going to do is just press the seams open because it is a little bit bulky. So this is fiddly but I'm just going to push them open. And then come along slowly with my iron. Okay, and then once you can see they are pressed open properly, I will now apply a bit of pressure. And then I will flip it over and just check that it's all sitting nicely on the front. And that's looking great and I'll give the whole block a press now if you weren't happy with how the center lined up don't forget you could always unpick it press the fabric and sew again it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect it just has to be how you're happy with it so I hope you enjoyed the double pinwheel quilt block if you did please hit the like button so the algorithm will share it with more people now, if you are doing my mystery block of the month, remember we're not going to square them up just yet. We'll square them up at the end. We'll measure the smallest one and cut them all down to that size. Now, with this block, if you do tend to find that they are ending up a little bit smaller, what you could do is when we are sewing the last four blocks together, that's when you do your scant quarter inch. So remember, you do a quarter inch, but just a few threads in, so it's just slightly smaller. And then I'm sure it's going to end up at 12 and a half inches squared. So this quilt block was part of my mystery block of the month. And if you don't know what that is, I'll put a link in the description below so that you can join in with us. Now, let me know in the comments how you get on. And if you get that little center there, all perfect. If you didn't, you decided to leave it or you decided to unpick it. I'd really like to know. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you again next week.